we'll we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, I kind of get things off. You know, I I was uh, a long time ago. I guess one of the things we all kind of things that we learn over the course of our lifetime. One of the things that I learned a long time ago was to uh, kind of do things right and try to be successful. Surround yourself with really competent people, and and it helps you uh, in, in your uh, achieving whatever it is that you put before you. So having John come alongside me in the process of putting together some uh, and saving some history uh, of our community, it was kind of like over the years, our, our business has been here, it's over 75 years old. We took over, my sister and I took over the business from my mom and dad. and. What we learned real early in, in that whole process was that there was this huge resource of images that had been accumulated that Dad had taken over a, a period of his career and time uh, in the community. And not only that, because we got to collecting uh, or restoring images, uh, old images, people would come to us and bring images to us. And one of those things that helped begin to accumulate even images that dad had not taken was the idea that mom and dad said if it was a historically significant image to the community, we'll make a copy of it if you'll let us ha keep a copy of it. So a lot of these images that, you know, when there was an estate being settled or someone coming to get grandmother's uh, things out of the attic and found something significant to the community, we ended up kind of being that depository. And, gee, John, when was it that you first came to us to approach us about the collection? Uh, oh, well, well, seven or eight years ago. It's seven or eight years ago. John comes to us, and, and let me tell you, for someone who was not raised in this community, he has, John has such a passion for the history of this community. John Lodel is our county's archivist and in charge of that building uh, over there close to the MAC that that is the depository for a lot of our community's history. And, uh, and we're, uh, not only does, like I say, he's, he's trained and competent in it, but he has a real passion for that. Well, he came to us and said that our images had been identified by the state, it, was it, that, uh, as one of three collections, I think? <laughs> tell the story of how, how you came to us. Let me, let me tell you about your photo. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Uh, Bill and Gloria's father over his lifetime, you know, like Bill just said, took pictures, collected pictures, loved pictures, loved history. And so as an archivist, I, I'm John Lodel, I run the Rutherford County Archives, uh, two blocks that way. Uh, and our main job is to keep county government records, but we keep an eye out for other things of importance to collecting all of our histories of Rutherford County, Murfreesboro. And we saw the Shackle Collection um, as something need to be preserved, and Bill and Glory so busy up there at the shop, as we call it, didn't have time to go down to the basement and work with 30,000 historic negatives and, and images. Wow. And so uh, when we contacted the state of Tennessee and said, I, is this something I should try to pursue? And they're like, that's probably the second or third largest collection of photographs in the state of Tennessee. I think you need to work on it. <laughs> and so we contacted and worked with Bill and Glory. Of course, I have support of county government. Uh, so we worked together, all of us worked together, and came up with an agreement of what we could do. And we got the images out of the basement and to the county archives where we're currently working on preserving them. It's 30,000. It's going to take us years. We've been working on it six or seven years, and it'll take a decade more. But uh, making great progress and having a lot of fun working with Gloria and Bill. And we can do the physical preservation of the documents, but, you know, half the time I don't know the history of the document because I'm not from here. So we're, we work hand in hand all the time. Uh, to figure out what some of these images are, when they were taken, who took them, those kind of things. So yeah, it's been a great partnership. And it's been a collaboration with MTSU too. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot uh, of people involved. There's a historic preservation group out there that I think created these. Uh, yeah. the, uh, a class we took initially what 50 or 75 images, and mm -hmm. and what we wanted to do was create a narrative to that, so that we could, when we did a search for it, like Rutherford County Courthouse, all these images would pop up so you could find what you were looking for. And basically that's the arrangement with the archives because what we needed to do was to protect some of those times you go to a restaurant and you see all the images that we've got. Uh, well, we sell those as a business and we wanted to maintain that relationship to be able to sell images 
but also if it was for research or for documenting you know, the history of our community to allow access to that. And that's what the archives and our relationship has allowed us to do. So uh, anyway, out of that, and about a year after we, we, we had made the donation, John came to me and said, we need to do a book. And uh, I, I was talking to some kids in elementary school, and they said, you wrote a book? And I said, well, the book, because the, what you do when you, when, when you want to write a book, you get somebody really competent and really intelligent, and you let them put your name on the book, <laughs> and you let them write it. <laughs> so so it, the, the heavy lifting of this that book, is not all true. the heavy lifting of this book was John, <laughs> and, and the motivation behind me. Bill, have you got those pictures? Did you get that picture, Bill? <laughs> uh, like you say, when you're trying to run a small business, sometimes, you know, and other things that we do in the community, you know, you kind of get derailed and so John kept us on task and after about 18 months I guess it was we got this book together and because it involved John's time and uh, you know we wanted to find something that would uh, benefit uh, how we could benefit that and I'm on the board to read to succeed and as some of you may know my wife is the director of Lion Ball Public Library and so we have a, a passion for literacy in our community so all the research all the Every dollar that's raised through our book goes to read to succeed, the, to a literacy effort in our community. So, uh, and it's been neat to see how it's kind of caught on. Uh, yeah, they are. They're for sale. They're $22. So it's, I've got a question about yes. that book, okay? I have the version with the old-time lady sitting out in the front yard. Oh. Yes. Is that the first one? Well, my question is, are the same pictures from that book in that book. No, 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 it's different. Arcadia book. Press does books throughout the nation. Um, they're, they're city, they're history based city <laughs> books, so to speak. So they do different series like a postcard books, um, historic images book, um, sports, uh, history of universities. MTSU has one of these little historic okay. picture okay. books. And this one's then and now. Um, the difference with this book is <clears throat> you match a now picture that we took a couple years ago with a historic image. So you can see the contrast from years ago and today, so to speak. So the series is then and now, and this is for the city of Murfreesboro, and, and Bill and I collaborated on this. And yeah, we're not making a dime off of this, by the way, we're, we're two public officials here. So, <laughs> so all the money's going to reach succeed, which is a, which is a, which is a great effort uh, on their part. And um, we really did it to promote the collection, to let people know that this collection exists, where they can find it at the county archives. Y'all can come, uh, we're open Monday through Friday, 8.30 to 4. Um, we have a website, you can, you can find us very easily. You can call us if you can't make it to the, to the building. And um, we can share the images with you. Now these images are not available on the internet because of copyright issues, um, but under Copyright Fair Clause uh, Act, you can come to the archives and look at them. You can use them for research. If you want a big print to put on the wall of a business, then you contact yes. Mr. Bill and he'll, he'll make that happen for you. Um, work with you on that. So, uh, so we've done a lot with the images, and oh, we're, yeah. we're just starting. Yeah. And uh, Bill wants to talk more. I think we have a couple presentations, and at the we end, did. maybe we can tell some funny stories about doing this book. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Can we go to the play right there? I'm, how many of you have? Yeah, we'll turn those lights off. Have you ever seen done a book in eight minutes? No. You're about to do a book in eight minutes. <laughs> turn the lights down and hit play.
Ah, uh, yes, it did. But guess what? You can. T- this is self-paced if you want to get the book. <laughs> and quite honestly, to me, and, and even though I took the uh, now pictures, uh, uh, the, the real strength of the book to me is what John has done to research the cut lines. And, and there's so much information that tells you about what the picture is. And uh, I was going to do this then, but I'm going to do it right now because I want you all to kind of get motivated to, to really pay attention. I know you're, you're probably paying attention, but I, about, I guess, months ago, I got a phone call. And it was my secretary called back and said, there's somebody on the phone who wants to talk to you. Well, being a city councilman, I wasn't sure exactly what it was going to be about. <laughs> you know, you never know when you pick up the phone whether somebody's angry or not. But I didn't. And he said, I want to thank you. And I went, for what? And he said, last night, my grandson and I spent two hours together with your book. He crawled up in my lap. And we went page by page, and I would tell him what I knew about the, and how I had lived in, in that time and knew something about it. And he said, we just shared for two hours. And he said, it was the sweetest time I've spent with my grandchild since he's been here. And I, I called John <laughs> right after he did that. I called John. I said, John, that's why we did this book. That's why we did this book, so that those moments could happen. And, you know, the neat thing about, you know, when you tell a story... Uh, you you then have, or you hear a story, you have that responsibility to share that story. And even the neat thing about pictures is they do communicate in a very effective way. Help us recall things. Help us remember things. Uh, when I was just a boy, we used to sit, every Sunday, we had, there were five relatives, uh, Shacklett boys and one girl in Georgia. But we used to, at the end of the day, we, uh, Sundays, we used to end up at Grandmother's house out on Sulphur Springs Road. One, uh, just Sunday afternoon, eventually everybody ended up at Grandmother's house and sitting on the back porch, and they would just, you know, at the end of the day, just tell stories. And quite honestly, to be frank with you, I was bored to tears. <laughs> I want to play baseball. I want to play, go fishing, go do something. I didn't want to sit there and listen to those <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> listen, those folks tell stories. I would give anything to spend an afternoon on that back porch listening to those stories. I wish I'd paid attention more. I wish I'd have recorded them. My grandmother was the first welfare lady in the city of Murfreesboro. Her office was in uh, City Hall, Council of Social Services. And uh, we got, we've got eight hours of not video, but cassette recording of grandmother telling stories. And let me tell you, they communicate so much more, those stories, and her voice. She's about five foot tall, but, and if you needed help, she would bust a gut to get you help. But if you were trying to take over the system and trying to take advantage of it, she didn't care if you were 12 feet tall. She wouldn't let you, she would ride you. And to tell you, I'll tell you a brief story on her. They had uh, given her a badge and deputized her. She was the first police woman in Murfreesboro. They deputized her so that when they arrested a woman that she could go frisk them. (laughs) And she was the only police woman there, but she was in the same building. So they had arrested a lady that was a bootlegger. And Granny walks in there. She tells the story, and I've got it on tape, 92 years old, walking into the room. Her name was Nina. And she says, the lady says, Ms. Nina, don't take my... Living, uh, don't take my, uh, my uh, whiskey, that's my living. And Granny, at 92 years old, says, but I reached right down there in them bosoms and I got that whiskey. <laughs> now, a little five-foot Granny telling that story communicated who my grandmother was so much more <laughs> than, than anything I could have told her. I could have showed her pictures even and it wouldn't have said, she was a wonderful lady. And so when I see so- stubbornness in my, gra- in my children, I know where it came from. <laughs> that, that she's, they have a stout heart and they have conviction as to what they're going to do. Uh, I wanted to talk through just a little bit of history of uh, where we are. And John, if you want to chime in, you know, please do. Uh, like so many southern towns, Murfreesboro was agricultural based. 
you know, that, that was the economy of our community, and a lot of it related to uh, uh, just people working in the field. And we didn't have a whole lot of mechanization. It was just basically people working in the field. And this is what they did with some of that stuff that they got out of it. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Some of you may remember that's Sheriff Sharp, and, uh, and uh, Mr. Goodwin here uh, was also a sheriff in our community. Some of you may know some of these people. These picture, pictures have been around our town for a while. Thank you, folks. That's probably helpful. Uh, this is not too far off the square, one block off the square, and a famous building. Does anybody know what that building is right there? Not the open. If any of you are Presbyterian, this is actually what the first Presbyterian church is steeple right there. But this is where uh, Appleton's is right now. But right there on the corner, a couple of things. This is Rosecrans, right? Headquarters. And it was also the home of Grantland Rice. Uh, Grantland Rice, and some of you may have heard of that. So much of what we did in the field, you know, revolved around, and, and we're, we're losing these. Uh, you know, as you guys probably were growing up, we, we saw, and I'm, even in my lifetime too, you know, I mean, I remember seeing uh, Brown's Mill, you know, uh, so many mills in our community. We used to fish those areas of Stones River, and those areas were really vital to our economy. They were the first Nissans, <laughs> basically. Uh, and an icon of our community was our courthouse. And, John, this was a union encampment? Union encampment of, of the courthouse after the Battle of Stones River, 1864, 1865. Anybody notice anything? This is pretty obvious, but what's different about it now? Camping? Well, what's different about our courthouse right now? Is anybody? Oh, the, 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 the top. <laughs> the cupola. <laughs> That's right. So, and, and like a lot of southern cities, we revolve around a, a a battlefield, and, and this is uh, from our battlefield. And, and right in front of our courthouse, they used to have all these reunions and lots of pictures that we have, just pictures and pictures where they would have reunions of that and, and uh, Confederate veterans would get together uh, to celebrate that. But our economy, well, yeah, it, what used to happen, this was cotton days. And what they would do is bring, after they picked the cotton, they would bring it to town. This is the north side of the square if you're looking along this bank of buildings. Courthouse is right here. Uh, they would bring in the wagons, weigh the wagons, and you'd get a prize if you got the heaviest wagon and the most cotton that was picked. But that was that was that drove our economy for so long. And another to show you kind of what around the courthouse, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, odd on a Saturday to see a whole bunch of wagons and buggies and and uh, horses around the courthouse. But a big part of our economy was dairy. And I remember that. My granddaddy had a uh, milk that he was in his 80s and milked 32 uh, cows by himself. And after he had an accident, my uh, uncle and myself and my dad uh, went out to take care of his 32 head uh, for several months. And it was so funny, as an 82-year-old guy, he could maintain grade A. And as, a, uh, as three of us, we couldn't get anything higher in grade B. <laughs> and we worked like the Dickens, I thought. But, oh, i got to tell you the story of the first milk check. The first milk check came after the, a month of us working twice a day. You know, the cows, they don't take off on the weekends. <laughs> you know? So you milk twice a day, and you're up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and you have to go back out and milk at night. And so it's a lot of work. And the milk check comes in, Dad says, the milk check came, the milk check came. I said, wow, how much did we get? Three of us working twice a day, every day. It was $132. And Dad said, that was the best thing I could have done for you to commit yourself to your college education. <laughs> to show you, stay on the farm, you're going to make $132, maybe. This is a, still here, but can anybody tell me what that is? That really is our first Nissan that came to Murfreesboro. Carnation milk plant, that's exactly right. And the chimney is still out there. You know, that little chimney that you see there, that's the carnation milk plant. And that, that particular kind of, because it supplemented and was a place for us to deposit all of our uh, dairies uh, products, that was a big deal for carnation to come to Murfreesboro uh, and supply and, and then gathered milk from the farms around our area. And this was a big celebration. Welcome to the Middle Tennessee Dairy Celebration. Uh, they have a big parade in the downtown celebrating all that the dairy industry meant to our community. I mean, a big-time parade. 
some of you remember A.L. Smith's is Henry Flores is what uh, A.L. Smith and Company Drugs right over there is, is where Henry's Flores used to be. And another industry that was that kind of supplemented that agricultural base was if you've been out to Cannonsburg and seen that big uh, bucket, the cedar bucket. This is the cedar bucket factory uh, that was uh, again part of our economy. And Christy, of course, uh, you know, bottling works, Coca-Cola coming into town. I still remember on on Broad Street. You remember we used to drive by the yeah. Coca-Cola plant and see the see the bottles running through. You know, they were running bottles through there, and. Uh, what, what do you remember about the Coca-Cola bottle, the, the glass bottles that you used to drink Coke out of? What did, what did, you, ever, did you ever play a game with them? <laughs> what, no, what was the game that you played when you ever... No, well, that too. <laughs> we weren't very thoughtful. But yeah, that's true. But every time somebody got a Coke out of a machine, we used to play distance. Because on the bottle, on the bottom of the bottle was where it was bottled. It was the name of the town that it was bottled in. You know, and we'd all go, oh, it's just Murfreesboro. It's just Murfreesboro. And, and I remember we were somewhere, I can't remember, looking at antiques, you know. And, and, and from the, oh, it's just Murfreesboro. It's just Murfreesboro when we were teenagers, you know. We were down, I don't know, in, in Atlanta one time at an old, uh, looking at antique stuff. And they had just bottles and bottles and bottles and bottles from all over the place. And I was diving through them trying to find one that said Murfreesboro on it. <laughs> but, you know. Murphy's bro, oh, you know, we were we were looking for something. You know, the one thing that we didn't get but God gave us was location. And that we have benefited from that because of our location forever. And if you haven't been out to see the center of the Tennessee, that's the monument out there. And it's because we have it right here. And so much of what the the community that we have and the prosperity that we've enjoyed over the years is because of our location, where we are centrally located. Uh, this is uh, the vet, uh, uh, York, uh, York uh, Veterans Hospital, and this is when it was first being built. If you've been out there recently, uh, I had to go out there for a, a, an event a few months ago, and I, I, it's, I mean, it's a lot more than that. And where just past there is subdivisions, so, I mean, it's changed a lot. And this picture was in the slideshow before, but I just love to show it. MTSU. <laughs> Golly, I mean, how many people went to MTSU or attended? Yeah, yeah. It was a teacher's college. It was. It started out as a teacher's college. In fact, I'm going to show. Yeah, it started out as a teacher's college because uh, you know, and that that was its roots because there was a real need. What's powerful to me as I look back at this is, you know, those the people that have gone before us, how thoughtful they were in pursuing things like uh, education. Planning that is one of the cornerstones of our community. Education has always been important. There was a book that Dad produced for the city schools called Teaching Values many, many years ago. And it was nationally recognized because of the way, the innovative way that they were looking at communication of values within the edu public education system. And uh, they, it got lots of attention. But we've always been uh, you know, education in our community has always been significantly important, and it started with the university. But uh, to me, it just see how it's changed. And you see how Middle Tennessee Boulevard now <coughs> it dead ends at uh, Greenland Drive. It, it dead ends uh, at Greenland Drive. Middle Tennessee State College. Dad and I. One of the things that, as a boy, I remember uh, we used to love to go out on a. As soon as the snow would come, I don't know if y'all remember how excited people would get uh, when the snow would come in, in, in Murfreesboro. Everybody would get so excited. Well, Dad would go out, and we would, he had a Jeep that he would get, and we would go out all over town and try to be the first ones out so you could get out before any uh, of the, all the tracks would be in the snow and go all over the county taking pictures. But this is one, Mr. Lynch, Gordon Lynch, some of you may remember that name as a contractor here in town, had a sled, and he would get out early in the morning, and we happened to catch him and his wife riding in their sleigh in front of the courthouse, I mean, in front of the monument there, and took that picture. You know, nowadays, it, Murfreesboro got that much snow. Yeah. The whole... I mean, Stop. <laughs> well, and it did then, too. It did, too. We, it's the nature of being in the South. I think we always thought we, they threatened snow and... You know, there's no bread and there's no milk in the grocery store. <laughs> you know, I, I, I get such a kick out of it. 
<laughs> I know. I know. We were from, uh, I actually, Gloria and I both were born in Idaho. My mother was from southern Idaho, a place called Twin Falls. If you remember where uh, uh, Evil Knievel jumped the Snake River yeah. Canyon, that's, that's Twin Falls. And uh, we used to laugh, you know, when we first moved back to Tennessee because we would go to school. They actually plowed the, str- the sidewalks. You know, and, and it, it would go to snow that would be higher than us. And, and then, you know, you yeah, get a threat of snow and, and they close schools. In, in northern Ohio, just east of Cleveland. There you go. They measure snow in feet. In feet, not, feet, in feet. <laughs> not inches. <laughs> um, what year was that? Uh, I, I would say in the 60s. In the 60s. Oh, no, well, it. He, the, he just saved that. Was, he, oh, I see. Yeah, that, that, that would have been in the 60s. Because I remember taking that, being with Dad when he took that picture. And there's the State Teachers College. That's, that's back when, when it was uh, that. And then, uh, yeah, that would have been probably late, uh, maybe 50s. But this was, uh, as you see, Middle Tennessee State College, you know, right there, where that used to be Murphy Center. <laughs> alumni Gym used to be, and lots of, t- lots of things took place in the Alumni Gym. I remember going to a, a concert in Alumni Gym, and it was so loud. And that was a time when I appreciated really loud music. It was so. It was uh, Chicago. And can you imagine Chicago performing in? It was a homecoming concert, and it was in Alumni Gym, and it was so loud. It was painful. I mean, it was actually painful. Uh, I put this picture in because this is out at Walter Hill, and uh, back when a city begins to grow, it has to have power, and so a lot. This was generating power for uh, our community at Walter Hill. And back there in the back, a lot of people didn't realize it, there was a pencil factory. And that big chimney there is a pencil. It's painted to be like a pencil, but it's a chimney. But the reason was that, that they were there is because there was so many, there were so many cedar trees in this area and a great source for what they did to use to make pencils. A lot of people don't realize that now, how much cedar was in this area, but cedars of Lebanon, you know, uh, all of that, there was a whole lot of... This is the downtown picture. The main drag of Murfreesboro was coming through College Street and then coming up to right uh, uh, Spring Street and then over to, uh, to uh, James K. Polk Hotel and out Woodbury Highway. But you also notice that the cupola looks different even in this picture. It's a different color. And that's the train station. So much happened around the train station. That was the uh, chief way in and out. We were uh, basically a whistle stop. People left for war. That, was, that picture was taken when people were going off to war. And uh, of course, you remember, some of you remember that Dixie Flyer uh, from l and uh, That was the Dixie Flyer was uh, l and Railroad. And there's James K. Polk Hotel. The main drag again came up this street and went out this street. That was the main drive to Murfreesboro. Some of you remember great times at the Princess Theater. Any of you ever attend to go to a movie at the Princess? Yeah? I still remember the first time. The first time I slept through Gone with the Wind was at Princess Theater. <laughs> that wasn't the last time I slept through the Princess I, It took me to probably in my 20s before I actually got to see the whole movie. I would just see parts of it. But the first time I slept through Gone with the Wind was in Princess Theater. No, it's right, and I'll show you here in just a minute where it, it, it burned, but, and then they changed the facade, and the facade then, most of my, my years, it looked like this. Yeah. When did they do away with that? Or, uh, when that, uh, let's see if I, I've got a picture. Uh, it's the Pinnacle Bank building now. It's where the Pinnacle Bank building. Yeah, the, but I the, mean, when I came, Prince wasn't here, and I've been here for 40 years. Yeah, when they built Pinnacle Bank is when it was torn down. And I'm not sure. It, yeah, it would have been. Yeah, it would have yeah. been some. I, I wanted to show you this picture. Any of you remember my uh, doctor uncle? <laughs> my doctor uncle, <laughs> our uncle doctor. <laughs> that that he was the one that I was named for. Oh well, that and my uncle uh, on my mother's side. But Uncle Bill, that's Uncle Bill. That's and, a three-shot yeah. chocolate. Three-shot chocolate. Actually became five-shot chocolate. <laughs> at, yeah. at, at the end of his career, he, pra- he was a doctor for 50 years, yeah. uh, practiced medicine for 50 th- years in our community, and uh, Uncle Bill was a soda jerk. And he used to toss, Dad took this picture, he used to toss that ice cream up and catch it in the cone, and if he didn't catch it, 
then you didn't have to pay for your ice cream. And I said, well, how many did you have to buy, Uncle Bill? And he said, I never paid for one. So, so I thought it was kind of cool uh, to, to show that picture of Uncle Bill. And this is my other uncle. If you, before there was uh, McDonald's, before there was, uh, you know, uh, all the Shoney's and all the different things that we, that we grew up with, there was Shacklet's. Any of you ever have a hamburger at Shacklet's? The Chuck Wagon? <laughs> that sandwich that he had was called the Chuck Wagon, and, and uh, that was on Broad Street. Uh, uh. And I wanted to show you this picture because, you know, we are right here. And right, yeah, right, yeah, there, there, we're right here. We're right here. And look how much land out from that area. I mean, right behind us was just a field. I, mean, we, I live off of Haines, so all mm -hmm. of that. Now, see, look, you're, you're a farm. <laughs> you're a farm. This is uh, uh, of a Murfreesboro Housing. This is Critchlow. Uh, but this was the high school at that time, before it burned. A little, little different angle to it, but it kind of shows you this again, the main drive through town. But it kind of shows you a lot of what we were was uh, basically just farmland. Uh, that's the courthouse as it is today, and I think the reason I wanted to show you that is just that there's been so many changes over the course of the years. There's something in this picture that has changed. The, the trees. The trees, but I'm going to give you a couple of hints. <laughs> Look at where the statue is. This is a Confederate soldier. Do you see where it is? It's in the front. It's out in front. Here's the front of the courthouse, and it's sitting out in front. Yeah. But where is it? Well, now I'm going to show you where it is. Let's see if we can find it. There it is. Who is that? that is the, that's a confederate, confederate soldier that was done. But that's where it is today, is on the corner, on the northeast corner, northeast corner of the courthouse. But when it was, when it was actually built, it was put right in the center, right in the center. And this is Main Street. You're looking up Main Street right to the courthouse. About what year would that be? You know, I don't know. I would... I mean, because it was, this was after, it. I, I put both of these pictures in here because this was before the courthouse cupola was renovated, and then this is after. So, uh, I want to say that the monument was built in 1904 and moved to 1909, some close to that anyway, I don't know my dates exactly. Okay. Um, Turn of the century kind of thing. Yeah. Built in 1900 and moved to 1914, a little Okay, okay. <laughs> And some of you remember on Saturdays coming to the square, you know, that was basically our avenues or shopping centers before shopping centers. And, you know, we all gathered at the square. And what's cool to me about the way some things are being done today, if you've been to the courthouse on a Saturday morning, that's kind of, that's the feeling that I get of my childhood, of coming to the square. You know, we had the farmer's market on Saturday. Uh, it's, the community's out there and talking to each other and stuff, and it's really cool. That was a little popcorn stand, if some of you remember the little popcorn stand that's right here. Used to be, uh, you'd be there. But I mean, what would you do in the square? I mean, if the stores are all around, why would you gather at the square? Well, just walk around the court, the whole square. Oh, I see. Yeah, just walk around the square. I remember when we moved here, there were people sitting there on the porch whittling. Whittling? Oh, yeah. Oh, thank you. You just reminded me of another story. My aunt came from Washington. She'd visit us the first time she came to visit us. And she, Aunt Dottie is just the sweetest thing there ever was, but she, she never meets a stranger. She'll always go up and talk to people. She came, coming over, she said, I've got to tell you, I've got to tell you. She said, I was sitting over there, and I saw these guys, this is many years ago, she's sitting on, and they're sitting on the bench, and they're whittling, they're taking a knife and going like this, you know. And, and she sits down beside this guy, and, well, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. And he sits there. She said, she said, uh, do you mind if I ask you a question? I'd really like to ask you a question. She said, okay. He said, sure. <coughs> what are you making? She said, I'm making it smaller. <laughs> making a I'm making it smaller. <laughs> what are you making with that stick? And he said, I'm making it smaller. <laughs> I, Aunt Dottie got such tickled about that. that was, you know how family stories go for a long time. Aunt Dottie was, she was a classic. What are you making? making it smaller. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. 
Okay, let's see, let's see if we can move a little faster maybe. Uh, 1913, tornado comes through town. A lot of people thought that the, uh, it took the cupola. That was the reason the cupola was changed. But this was a glass plate that we've actually found. Interesting thing about this, we had somebody, some of you remember Al Gore was a, uh, a state uh, senator before he you know, ran for president and did all that, vice president. Uh, one of his representatives, his office was right next to our business when it was on East Main Street, 121 East Main Street, his, his uh, what do you call it, area office or whatever you call it. But anyway, uh, Bill was his kind of representative there, and he moved to Washington and was happened to be in a yard, looking through a yard sale and found these glass plates. And he happened to be flipping through them, and he said, he was looking at them, and he said, this is Murfreesboro. And he found, he came and donated, gave them back, gave them to us to hold on to. These are glass plates, and these were part of those glass plates. The images happened to be in a yard sale in Washington, and only because Bill happened to be by there. I mean, bigger hands guiding us than, <laughs> than what we know. Uh, and then this becomes part of our, fan, our you know, community's history now because of that. And this is, this is my church, this First Presbyterian Church, before it, uh, when it, it was hit by the tornado and destroyed, and we had to build it back. I uh, wanted to show you this picture because of so much as a conversation in the last few weeks have been about what's happening in our downtown, and the city bought this property where the uh, uh, First Methodist Church was, the Franklin Synergy Bank. Uh, lots of good things are going to happen over there, I just, I just know. Uh, but it's not always been that way back in the... Uh, years to come. This corner has always been a vital part of our community. Uh, it was a livery stable, Murfreesboro livery stable. Uh, it was a post office. Uh, it was, the, and now it's the Center for the Arts. But it was something in between that picture and that picture. Does anybody remember what it was? It's probably all of your life. There you go. Thank you. That's exactly, I'll tell Rita y'all knew. <laughs> uh, that's where Rita started. She graduated from Peabody and uh, went to work for the library and she's been there ever since. This is Central High School. Where? Uh, it was on Maple Street. It was on Maple Street. Uh, it's where the Murfreesboro. You mean behind the goal? That's uh, yeah, that's Central High School. The original Central High School. It was uh, where the Murfreesboro Housing Authority is it's now. Small. And then it burnt, 1944 somewhere. 44. 44. Yeah. Uh, and famous people came to Murfreesboro. This is anybody want to guess? That's General MacArthur and his wife. Gene Faircloth. Gene Faircloth was a resident of Murfreesboro, and so he made a tour stop in Murfreesboro, and a few people turned out. <laughs> a few people turned out for the celebration there. Pretty, pretty neat. And this wasn't that particular day, but we also had a, a Japanese uh, submarine come through our town. They were raising money uh, for war bonds. And what year was that? Was that in the 40s? It was in the 40s, yeah, it's during the war. There's a famous picture, people, person in this picture, and I want to see if you can guess it, who, where he is. Famous person. You got it! There he is, up in the upper right-hand corner. Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley, yeah. This is uh, Tom Perriman, and he and his wife uh, had a radio station. Yeah, way over there on the end. Uh, Tom Perriman had the radio, WGNS, or MTS, uh, MTS, I think it was. But he was traveling through and had invited his crew and all, all of his folks over for dinner. And son of a gun, now they've got this picture of Elvis. <laughs> this is right before he was, went on the Ed Sullivan show. Oh. Wow. Right before he was famous. And I thought, let's see, let's just go around the square just a little bit. That's East Main Street, uh, West Main Street, look, going towards the... Uh, and there's Goldstein. Some of you remember Goldstein's. It was part of my growing up. Didn't look like that when I was growing up, but it's part of it. This building right here, I'll show you. You'll have another picture of it, but this was actually the city hall uh, and a fire station. That is the Presbyterian Church right there, so you can kind of see its north northeast corner looking there. Now, is this the same side? Is that where, is this, this is actually, this would be the west side of the square, the northwest side of the square. On uh, northeast side of the square, excuse me, northeast side of the square. We don't have those parapets on the square anymore. Uh, Henry's, Henry's floor. Uh, this is my side of the square. This is where our business is. Uh, we're right, right there, right here. That's our business. We're on the end now. Both of these buildings are no longer there. That's where that empty space is. This is our building right here. When at the church, they moved. 
Is it St. Paul's on East Main Street? Yeah, the that, that's, that's, that was that's the Episcopal. original location. They yeah. picked the church up and moved it. Yeah. 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 And then this is the north east northwest part of the square. That's Haynes Hotel in the background, and you can see my my uh, Smith case and uh, Kit Kittrell, uh Actually, my granddaddy had a dry goods store right there with Kaysen. It was Shaplet, Daly and Sanders, and Shaplet and Casey. Kaysen. Kaysen's are relatives. Some of y'all remember John Kaysen was a physician here for a long time. <laughs> Uh, this is uh, kind of the way we were, uh, dirt road going through town. And then this is the way that the, uh, I just want to say, you know, whether we're front or back, it's, uh, and then our, uh, you know, the bustling town that we have right now. Let's see if I can get to what I wanted to say to you guys. Uh, I'm going to flip through this real quick because I want to end with this. This is a picture of my dad. And uh, uh, he did that in 1976. And... Uh, but that was a picture taken a lot longer, earlier than that, but uh, when he started in photography. I was, the last group that I spoke to was Youth Leadership Rutherford. And uh, I found this quote before I spoke to them, and, I, and it was for them. It was to say, you know, as a young person, it's important and imperative. I wish I'd have been more sensitive to the idea that, you know, learn about the past, know about the past. I really never started paying attention as t until I got to be an adult and I started seeing those people that I had relied upon. Yeah. Uncle John, Aunt Ruth, my father and mother. I had relied upon them to, to communicate the stories or verify the facts as long as they were here. But when they started to pass away, I realized you know, the only person that's, I've got to pay attention or something's going to be lost. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I thought it was so appropriate for them. But you know what? <laughs> it's appropriate for all of us. It is so appropriate to all of us. As we look at these images, and I'll just flip through them real quick. That's the way we were. <laughs> Dad took this picture when Center Hill, when Center Hill was... Uh, being uh, put in, the, the Percy Priest Dam was being per put in, and Center Hill Dam actually. And Dad went out to photograph. This is underwater now, but this, this is our life. This was the life that Dad was trying to remember and to help to remember. Outhouse, the path to the outhouse. <laughs> a, a different world than he was. Uh, it is an outhouse, yeah. Really? It's an outhouse that, that that you would walk away from, you know. But it's 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 a picture of a time that we don't have anymore, at least not in this country. Well, I can't say that because I have seen similar things like this when I go to South Dakota on the Indian Reservation. But there, this is not a time. This is not the life that we see now in our town. This is this is a different kind of a life that we have. And. I, I, some of these are the same pictures, but I'll, I'll uh, let me see if I can get through this so I can show you something. I want to show you something at the end. This is like my slideshow of the whole, <laughs> there's so many things that have changed. Oh, uh, y'all remember that? Yes. Uh, I was, we found this just the other day, and I, and I blew it up because I wanted to see who was here. I wanted to see some of these people. But uh, Mayor Westbrooks, some of you may remember uh, Hollis Westbrooks is in the picture. Uh, but I remember this day, Dad brought us to the square, and they built this platform in front of the courthouse. And I was just a little boy, and it was like, you know, big deal, you know. And I, I had... I, I, I'd forgotten about it, but it was a big deal to have those people come to. That's where that was Gene Fairclough's home. It's down now. It's where the the corner of the where the hospital is. And let's see. You know what? So I can get you to. Could you go to the thing so I could? Well, I tell you what. Let's see if I can just slip through. It. Maybe that's easier for me to flip through. It. There's so many pictures, though. I'm afraid. Oh, there's so many things to talk about in these pictures. The price of gas in this picture is 28 cents. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there, there's just so many things that you can uh, that you can talk. That that's college life in the '60s. Uh, Dad did the ASB pictures. That's that picture is this is Central High School, the nowadays Central High School. This is uh, Tennessee College for Women. Uh, 
the old hospital, the water tower is still there, some of those reference points that you can see. Oakland's mansion up there in the upper right hand corner where Oakland's was or is. Baseball big part of life. There's a picture of Uncle Bill again. Oh, am I not hitting something right? Well, it's locked. Oh there we go. There's old central. Uh I'm on the Main Street Board, and I, and I just wanted to say what Main Street has meant to our community. This is, uh, this is the bottoms. One of the things we're doing in the city, I don't know if you know, there's a, a study being done to uh, really look at what opportunities are in the downtown and the bottoms area. But this before uh, Broad Street came through, this is what it looked like down in the bottoms. Is that now where uh, Canada Road is? It flooded all the time. That's why it called the bottoms. Uh -huh. Really? Is that now where Cannonsburg is? Yeah, it's in that general area of where Cannonsburg is. Yeah. But this is what Main Street, this is before, and these pictures over here is what it looks like today. Main Street has done a lot for renovating our downtown and making a difference in our community. Uh, one of the things, our streetscape is where we've taken all the wires down. You don't see when you come up uh, West Main Street yeah. to the courthouse, you don't see all the wires. Uh, that's the way it looked, East Main Street looked, but now that's the way East Main Street looks. Uh, it's made a big difference. Main Street has done a whole lot. And something I wanted to invite you, the first of May, the first weekend in May is Jazz Fest, and I hope you'll get a chance to come down if you enjoy what happens in the square. It's where we feel like a community. A lot of the things that Main Street has done, even though we're a bigger community and a more diverse community than we've ever been before, there's so many times and opportunities for us to feel like a community again. Come downtown the first of May on that weekend and listen to the great uh, on Friday night, it'll be the high school bands. On Saturday, you'll have other entertainment, but lots of good things happen. Our first Friday series uh, happens on, uh, on the first Friday of, of, of June, July, and August. Uh, come and see that. Feel like a community. Look at how many people are downtown. It's really sweet. Lots of events happen in our downtown community. Make us together. Certainly our market. I hope you get a chance to come to our market th this time. There's 56 Venn. 56 vendors at our at our market in the downtown area, so you need to come. And we always say, you know, where hip meets the story. Uh, again, I remind you that about the the more you know about the past, the better you prepare for the future. That's the way we were. Ah, come on, come on. There we go. That's the way we are. The way we were. Where you when they had big big there are a bunch of places out. Uh, there's a bunch of uh, uh, there's public parking in our city garage, particularly on the weekends. Good. I want to leave you with this, you know, and you know, I guess the one thing that that I feel is, uh, a, as a city councilman, you know, you get a chance to see some of the things as we're approaching what we're going to become and what we're doing, and and make some of those decisions. But you need to have input. You need to be knowledgeable as it. It doesn't matter. It's not a function of age. It's a, a function of vitality and interest. So care about what our community is becoming because, like I say, change is inevitable. Progress is optional. But if, and it's important for us that have a memory of a time and a style and a quality of life. It's, it's imperative on us as we look to save history of our community. The, the, the most important thing we can do, and all of us have that opportunity, is to share it. Find somebody and talk about the way things used to be. Uh, and, and we all can do that. Uh, with the group that we're around or seek other uh, people to, to truly, that, that, and it's amazing to me when I start, we go out, Glory and I go out in the, in the elementary schools and start talking about history and bringing some of the old photos. The kids just eat it up. They, they really do enjoy hearing and talking about the way things used to be. Uh, and and uh, some of the teachers are even doing projects now where they'll go ask them to interview uh, older folks to kind of fit, remem remember what, how things used to be. That's a good thing to intergenerationally connect with history. But uh, the best way to save history is to share it. And I hope you all have found something that you can share out of today's presentation. Thank you so much. They are.